Hey guys, it's Carrie Ann and I'm back with some information on brushes today. So I often get asked questions about what are the best brushes to use for uh, different work and different mediums and how to look after your brushes as well. So this is the Graduate range, one of the ranges that we have in store. So these are a multi-purpose brush. They're suitable for acrylic, oil, watercolour and gouache. And the information on the stand tells you a little bit about the bristles as well. So I could go into really, really detailed explanation about brushes, but I'll do that in a separate video. This is just an overview of brushes and how to take care of them and sort of what sort of brushes to go for when you're starting out. So brushes come individually and also in multi-packs. You'll see them flat, you'll see them round, you'll see them pointed, you'll see all different types of bristles and it can be a bit of a minefield if you're just starting out on your art journey or your craft journey. When you're looking at just starting out and if you're looking to work with watercolour, gouache, acrylic, then I would probably recommend going for a multi-pack and I would get yourself um, a multi-pack in round and a multi-pack in flat. So these Pebio brushes, um, they're really good. They're around six pounds for a pack of, I think six in those. So a really good brush to have. They will last a good time, a long time as well if you're looking after them. That will give you a good range of sizes and obviously the flat and the round for doing different techniques and things like that. I'll do a separate video using the brushes to show you the different marks and strokes you can get with the different types of brushes. So that would probably be my first recommendation would be to go for multi-packs when you're just, just starting out in acrylic, gouache or watercolour. If you're starting out with oil, I would say invest slightly more in your brushes um, because they're going to take a little bit more of a hammering when it comes to cleaning. So when you're cleaning your acrylic, your or watercolour and your gouache, often you only need warm water. There are lovely soap cleaners that you can get um, to go with the warm water. You can get bar soap and liquid soap for cleaning your brushes for acrylic, watercolour and gouache use. But in all honesty, if you clean them quite quickly with warm water, you'll find that they perfectly clean out nice and clean. So I'd probably say if you're starting with those, then you wouldn't need to invest in the cleaners just yet. On the other hand, when you're working with oil, you are going to need a turpentine or a solvent based cleaner. Um, that's something I'll cover in a separate video. And that's when you're going to need to start investing a little bit more in your brushes because they, they obviously need to be cleaned with chemicals and that means that they're not going to last as well if you're not looking after them properly. Another thing I would say with brushes is always store them as you see here, always, always store them upright like this so that the bristles are up in the air. Never ever store them upside down. Don't store them in the pot like this. Never, ever, ever leave them in water. If you leave them in water, you will find that the metal or wood, whatever you've got on the brushes you've got, will rust and rot away. Um, and also you will get damaged bristles from them being flat as well. Um, so I'm just gonna scan and have a little look at some of the other brands. So there's lots of different brands on the market, some specialist and some um, that will be multi-purpose. So you can see here the Winsor & Newton ones, for example, those ones are watercolour only, whereas the ones next to it, the Royal & Langical, are watercolour, acrylic, oil and tempera, which is obviously a version of the gouache, I would assume. And if we scroll up here, these are multi-purpose as well. And then you've got brushes like this, which are great for stippling, but you can see straight away that the bristles aren't as good quality as when you're looking at the bristles on various other brushes. So you would compare these bristles here to the like of these here in their strength and the type of effect that you're going to get. So another thing to look out for is if you're looking at brushes and you find that they've actually been sort of waxed together a little bit like this, that's actually where they've applied a medium to make them go into the points like that. It's not as soft and you'll need to wash that out before you start working with them and let the bristles flow out a little bit. So give them a wash before you start working with them. I would advise washing any brushes uh, with warm water before you start working with them and do dry, let them dry off afterwards um, because obviously you don't want to be adding water unnecessarily to the product you're working on. So hopefully this gives you a bit of an overview of sort of brushes, how to look after them, remember to store them upright like this. Um, if you can, um, store them somewhere where they're not going to be in direct sunlight all day long um, because that can also have an effect on the length of time that they will last. Um, and just lastly, these new brushes that are coming to the market, um, Aquaflow or water brushes as some people know, they are fantastic for travelling around. So if you're a watercolour artist and you are out and about often, um, I mean it's a bit rainy today, but if you were here for example and you were going down to the beach uh, water brushes are fantastic because they store the water in themselves you can get them with different size um, tops as you can see different brush ins 
um, and you can get flat and pointed and things like that and they are great for traveling and things like that but I wouldn't say they're something that you would use um, if you're going into sort of doing professional work and wanting to sell your work all the time you'll probably find that you need a little bit more practice with them because you need to make sure you get the flow of the water right um, so yes they're brilliant if you're just having fun and you're out and about doing sketches um, plein air uh, but probably not when you're in the studio uh, with your watercolors if you want to learn how to get the right amount of water on your brush each time so hopefully that gives you a, a bit of an introduction into brushes. If you have any more questions, do let me know and I'll do a more in-depth video in looking after particular brushes and, and what brush does what brush stroke and things like that in a later video. Have a great day, guys.